Welcome back to AgriTalk in Melrose, Minnesota. As we are very happy to be a part of the Member Appreciation Day here at Central Minnesota Credit Union in Melrose, working with our affiliate KASM and also helping to kick off June Dairy Month as we are right here in the heart of dairy country. And uh, we're happy to have with us now a couple of outstanding state politicians. Outstanding state politicians. I had to I had to work on that applause a little bit, but we got some. We got some. You know, they're happy. They've got dilly bars in them. They're they're feeling good. All right, we have Senator uh, Joe Gimsey with us. He's on the Transportation Committee, and also State Representative Paul Anderson is on the Ag Committee. So we'll talk with both the senator pulls rank and he gets to go first besides he has a sport coat on he really looks senatorial here today you know so we'll, we'll go with that uh, senator gimsey thank you for joining us uh, um, i guess minnesota like about every other state dealing with financial issues and right now you're struggling to get a budget here for the state well we are we adjourned about a week ago um, without a state budget and uh, we're working out the details with our governor on that and trying to get it fashioned in a, in a shape that uh, moves Minnesota forward certainly but uh, we do have some work to do here in Minnesota and a, a bit of a divide between what we have coming in the front door into the pocketbook and uh, what uh, certain people want to spend in the state of Minnesota and it's a classic difference I think it's a, the same argument that is happening around this country and uh, whether we increase revenues or whether we live within our means and and move forward. Well, as I told you, I'm from Illinois. I know budget problems, <laughs> believe me. Uh, we have them big time in our state. Uh, and that is, and we've been talking about this on the federal level. It is really that fine line. I mean, cutting obviously has to be done. You have to cut spending, but you have to be careful that you don't cut things that then cut off the growth, the economic growth that can take place. Well, I think the economic growth is is important, and then also that safety net for people that uh, really need those government services. We have to be very careful, uh, craft a budget that uh, meets all of those needs, and move, like I say, move, moves Minnesota forward. Now, on the Transportation Committee, uh, it's a challenge, I'm sure, to handle those issues with the budget tightness that you have. Well, they are, but in Minnesota, transportation is unique in that most of our revenue comes from our gasoline tax, our fuel taxes, our registration, and uh, the motor vehicle sales tax. So it really is separate from the general fund argument. And we've been making the argument that uh, we need to pass a transportation bill uh, for the last month because it isn't tied to the general fund and the big, bigger discussion about general fund issues. Of course, we're in a state that's a great supporter of biofuels here. We are. We have a mandate in Minnesota, and uh, we uh, on the cutting edge of that. And you know, we've seen the the ethanol industry grow here in Minnesota, and we would like to see that uh, generated throughout the country, more throughout the country. And uh, it's been uh, a good program. Uh, it's had its ups and downs, like any other business, but uh, it's been very beneficial to our agricultural communities. Your state has indeed been a real leader in that. Now we're seeing other states do similar types of uh, programs. All right, and Representative Paul Anderson, a member of the Ag Committee. Paul, thank you for joining us. Uh, it's been a challenging spring for farmers uh, trying to get the crops in. It certainly has, and I'm also a, a farmer in my, my real life. And uh, the planter is sitting right now this morning. I'll be back on to this afternoon. I got stuck about dark last night in one of the many potholes in the field. And had to get my wife out there to pull me out. Uh, so we're still speaking today, but uh, it has been a challenging year. Uh, how, far, how far behind are you from a, what would be an average year planning progress? I would say we're a couple of weeks behind, and it's going to depend, like you were talking about, uh, the weather from here on in. It's going to pop out of the ground quickly what we get to planted, but uh, it's going to take a, a good warm summer, and a long fall is going to be a key to get these crops matured. Yeah, I've seen some corn up, but it's not up a lot. No, it certainly isn't, and it uh, used to be knee-high by the 4th. Uh, the last couple of years was shoulder-high by the 4th, but uh, it's not going to make that this year. What are some of the issues that you're dealing with on the Ag Committee? Well, the Ag Budget was the one item that uh, did get settled this year earlier. The governor signed the Agriculture Bill, so they're going to keep working, I guess, uh, come July 1, if, in fact, the state does shut down. But uh, as you mentioned with Senator Gimsey, the biofuels is a big issue here. Uh, Minnesota, the Ag Department, uh, really is concerned with uh, our food supply and, our, and food safety. We want to make sure that uh, those things are maintained and that our people can uh, rely on, on a safe uh, food supply here in Minnesota. That's one of, our, one of our key areas in the Ag Department. 
We talked about the biofuels mandate that uh, your state was really a leader in. Uh, there's a lot of challenges to those kind of programs now across the country. What about here in Minnesota? How is it being received, and are there those trying to uh, take it down? Yeah, both in the ethanol, um, you, you're having this food versus fuel debate. Uh, I think the way to go with ethanol is blender pumps. There's a push on the federal level to, to get some of these pumps out there. And uh, with the biofuels, we've had some issues with, uh, with filters gelling up in the cold weather and um, price issues with that. So uh, we're at a B5 right now, scheduled to go to a B10 level in 2012. And we want to work through those issues to make sure that that, that, that works for everybody. Uh, the blender pumps, you're right, uh, we're seeing a move in the ethanol industry now to let's, uh, let's put more of the money, the support money, the subsidies or the tax breaks towards blender pumps, infrastructure, more flex fuel vehicles, things like that. So that's something you would support. Oh, it certainly is. Uh, uh, the uh, blender's credit, uh, the tax credit uh, may be phased back down and tied to a, a ramp up in, in prices, for example. We might not need it right now with high prices, gas prices and things. So let's take that money, scale back and save some money and use some of it to uh, help the infrastructure, either a pipeline or, or blender pumps to, to get more product in use by more people. How are ethanol plants doing here in the state of Minnesota? Well, surprisingly, uh, I think they're at a break even or possibly a slight to profit uh, right now. It depends on, of course, their, their debt schedule, their debt structure. but. Uh, uh, as gas prices have gone up, corn prices have followed. So uh, if corn prices stay up there at $7 a bushel, which a lot of feeders hope they eventually come down again, but uh, gas and, and ethanol are pretty much tied together, and uh, when one goes up, the other usually follows. I know this is a challenge for those, if you're buying corn for feed, high price is not good. If you're selling corn, obviously it is good. So it's, uh, we're trying to find somewhere, it'd be great, great to have that happy medium in there. That's, that's hard to come by. Well, you're, you're certainly true, and, and uh, $7 corn doesn't work in a lot of uh, feed rations, things like that. And um, if things would stabilize around that 4 or $5 range, and also our inputs have really gone up uh, as well, fertilizer, chemicals, things like that. So um, if they'd stabilize and uh, we all could make a profit, that's what, we, what, we, what we'd like to see. What are we seeing as far as dairy producers in the state? Are you, are you keeping the industry or are you losing dairy producers? I think the number of dairy producers is declining, but the number of cows is staying stable or actually increasing. Uh, when, when guys get to that retirement age, if they don't have a son to step in for them, they're probably uh, sending those cows down, down the road. But uh, cow numbers are staying up. Uh, some larger dairy herds are, are, are taking their place. And um, futures prices are in that $18, $19 range, which certainly beats the $13 of a year ago. But again, they have those high input costs, and, and break-even is in that $15, $16 range, so they need that, that price up there around $20. Well, good to have both of you with us. Good luck on getting that budget taken care of, and uh, uh, I know there will be plenty of challenges ahead, and good luck uh, when you go back home and see if your wife's talking to you about getting the tractor stuck. You know, uh, Good luck with that one. Well, thank you much. I'll tell her you put in the good word. <laughs> tell her, give you a pass on this one, okay? Tell her you were talking with a guy on the Transportation Committee, and uh, you're working on transportation issues, all right? Thanks to uh, State Senator Joe Gimsey and Representative Paul Anderson, and thanks to all of our friends here in Melrose and KASM and the Central Minnesota Credit Union. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks for joining us on AgriTalk.